Well, let's have a look at what's going on here. Um, I'm, I'm not sure yet how to proceed from, you see that, okay? Yeah, from here down. Uh, I know it's not going to stay exactly like that, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to worry more about this area. Here are, are sort of, you, you have more exposed rock, you know, limestone, sandstone, that sort of thing, catching this light. Here we have this side of the hill in, in the shade, but as, we, but as we come around to the edge, the light's coming from this direction, so we're going to need to catch a little bit of light here. Without drawing too much attention to this area of the painting, I'm not worried about that because this will not compete with the strength of some of these trees. I'm probably going to go fairly orange with some of the tips. I, I said earlier in an, in an earlier video that these might be uh, little spruce trees. Well, they could be tamarack as well, or, or uh, oh, what's the other word for them when you get into the Rockies? I can't think of it. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to put a few brush strokes in here. And maybe what I'll do as well is paint in these, these trees. Over here I've used uh, ultramarine blue and yellow ochre and a hint of uh, burnt sienna. And our, oh, I already see something I'm not happy with, so I'm just going to fix that first. Um, but I think that I like these as a silhouette against that sky in the background. So I'm going to go with cobalt blue. Which, which will make this green colder. Um, so that although there might be some, uh, uh, I don't know about direct sunlight, but some light shining in this area on the hill, where the trees meet the sky, I'm still going to use that as a silhouette because I'm pretty happy with this design um, against the sky. And this, this is our focal area, right? So if I'm happy with it, why change it? Okay, first I'm just going to do this little thing I was complaining about. I don't like that. You know, it still looks like two fangs. <laughs> two fangs and that's not good. Let's put a little bit more light there. And... a little bit more of a continuous look and those two don't look like look like you're looking inside the mouth of a cat while it's laying on its back all right so rather than working on this right now actually I think I'll just Lay in some strokes on these silhouetted trees. Um, just because personally, I'm more curious about how this is going to work. So rather than being smart and testing off on the edge, I'm going to be dumb and daring and I'm going to lay in a little bit of color. right away on the trees in the focal area. Looks like I got lucky. I think that's going to work. Okay, enough. Let's go for number two now. I'm trying to lay in my brush strokes, not to color in the tree, or not only to color in the tree, but to try to give it shape as well.
Good enough. Seems kind of like I'm carrying on with this uh, cartoon effect. Which can be just fine, you know? I, I did mention at the beginning of the painting that this one was likely going to be fairly highly stylized. brush where you need to can be a very effective way of um, well it, it's, a, it's a way of showing a strong brush stroke and it's an economy of stroke I'm sure that's a term you've heard before So I think what I'll do is just, there, a little higher value, and this whole time this, this, the toothiness of this canvas is, is, is really irritating me, but whatever, let's just deal with it. Still too weak. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, I think I don't mind if that. And if this one gets undercut a little bit. Because I'll make the pay the higher value here than it is here. So it'll bring it back to the foreground again. And yes, the light is coming from this direction, going this way, but this side of these trees is also reflecting the ambient light that comes from this direction. And sometimes you have to cheat a little in order to make certain things look like they are in front of other things. Again, this is cobalt blue and burnt sienna.
timid. So that's why I'm suddenly throwing a little more strength into that tree. Now, I'm, you know, in general, I'm, the paint that I'm putting on right now, I'm putting it on fairly thinly. So it does, you know, it's, it's pretty forgiving. I can go into it again later. Um, to lighten it, or darken it, if need be. temptation, eh? You just want to, oh, I'll just do this, and I'll just do that, and I'll just do this. While you're looking at it from, from uh, 20 inches away, and then eventually you're done an area, and you sit back, and you look at it, and you say to yourself, what was I thinking? Why did I not stay with these strong strokes? At least that's what I do sometimes. I increased my red sienna and this little bit. I want those bushes to seem like they're over the hill a little bit. Okay. I'm happy with that, at least for the time being. We'll change brushes and what have I been using? An itty bitty. What is this? It's a little. Rule number four. And I am jumping up to a, a brand new number six. And I don't like brand new brushes, but that's the other thing about a toothy, a toothy canvas. It wears down your brushes pretty quickly. And I wear down my brushes pretty quickly because, well, I just, I do a lot of painting. So, obviously, that's how it's going to go. All right. Now, as you can see, I already kind of decided on my design in this area. Uh, again, ignoring this, but we're going to work on that for a moment. Uh, now we're coming around the edge of the hill. I've been using um, raw umber, yellow ochre, and hints of burnt sienna uh, in these green streaks. This purple is ultramarine blue and uh, a lizard and crimson. Let's see if I've gone too light. Yeah, I think that's a bit too light. I'm going back to my uh, raw umber and uh, yellow ochre. And before I raise the chroma of this too much, some of these spots in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to establish where the top of that hill is. This is a flat brush, but uh, 
It's also a long haired brush and I forget at the moment what the name is for that. I like to know my brushes but uh, not well enough always to know them by name. Sorry, I'm not much of an instructor. <laughs> I'm still very unsure as to how um, as to how tall I'm going to let these trees come. You know, I may just drop the whole bunch and end up with more of a design in the hill behind it. <coughs> but we'll play with it. You know, I, I know that this being the focal area, typically you would allow more area, more room for this hill. But there's a challenge in breaking the rules, and that's what I kind of like, is the challenge. If there's no challenge, there's no fun to it. Okay, you know what? Painting this in is going to involve thinking about these, rethinking about these. So I guess what I'll do, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll get back to you, uh, I'll get back to you later about this, I, uh, I'll do these little bushes probably tonight, um, but I just wanted to take you along for a few strokes, this video gets, these videos get pretty long in no time, uh, it's, time goes pretty quickly when you sit here painting. Um, this one might just have to tag you over for Saturday. I know I've been lazy, but uh, I'm, I'm working tonight and uh, blah, blah, blah. Have a good weekend if I don't talk to you before then. Thanks for watching. See you guys.